it's week two and 11 bakers remain here at Tinnakilly House. They're in the tent, intent on becoming champion baker. Now, I love this round because it's the only show where I get to have someone else's cake and eat it. Yes, it's cake week on the Great Irish Bake Off. Last week, the baker's first signature challenge was a memorable moment dessert. The technical task was Paul's exotic cheesecakes. What could possibly go wrong if you just follow a recipe? Fiona. Fiona was our first star baker. She's trying to impress. She's given her bakes height. She's been creative. But a wobbly trifle and unset cheesecakes meant the end of the road for Sandra McGarry. I don't think I'll ever work with gelatin again. Doesn't like me. This week, Lily is putting it up to our bakers. And our new judge has come up with their very first technical challenge. Not good. <laughs> Tastes nice. And they face their first showstopper. God damn it. I think I grilled the chocolate. Let's be honest, it's a mess. Lily and Paul accepted nothing but the best. All the challenges have been stepped up a bit. So these bakers know what to expect and we've had to increase the difficulty in pretty much everything. I'm going to be difficult to please because I know exactly what I want. So for a baker to stand out for me, they'll have to do something wonderful. When we're actually in there and you get the ingredients and you see the ingredients and you know that it's the baby of somebody who loves to bake, you know it's their invention, it's something they love, that puts an added pressure on you. I'm from Leash, so I'm kind of used to getting a lot of beatings in the hurling, so I feel like at the moment it's, it's Leash up against Kilkenny, Galway, Tipperary, you know, so it's, it's a different standard. Anything that I'd made once before, or that I had at least read about or seen and know what it's supposed to look like, I'm going to be okay with, you know, or at least <laughs> I'm going to feel okay with. We'll see what happens a couple of hours in, you know. Hello, bakers. Well done on surviving week one. It's cake week, and our new judge has come up with our very first technical challenge. Lily would like you to bake an adult-only coffee cake. Adult only, because there's a little bit of alcohol in it. Lily, have you any words of advice for our bakers? I think just take your time, read the recipe really carefully, and I know you're all really well able for this challenge, so good luck. As you know, this is blind judged, so I'll ask you two to leave the tent. Good luck. OK, bakers, for this technical challenge, you have two and a half hours. On your marks, get set, bake. Ooh. My eldest sister lives abroad and every time she comes home I make her this coffee cake and it's become a real family favourite. It doesn't say um, the temperature. No, it doesn't. So we're going to be looking at everything they bake from every angle and especially Paul, he's got such a good technical eye. Well, I like coffee cake, and I've eaten a lot of them, so at least I'll know what it should taste like. Don't mind if it gets sent home tomorrow. Just try not to make a fool of myself. That's the main aim here. Not good. <laughs> well, this is an adults-only coffee cake, and I'm not an adult, so... <laughs> but I'm gonna make it anyway. It's not my cup of tea, or, or a coffee in this case, but I'm looking forward to seeing if the bakers have fallen into the trap and thinking that it's too simple, too easy, and getting caught out. Lily, your first technical challenge on the Great Irish Bake Off. And you have gone big, but also it's an adult's coffee cake. What does that mean? It's sort of a nostalgic coffee cake, but with a modern twist. So there's different layers in it. There's two different types of icing. There's chocolate dipped coffee beans. And every second layer has liqueur. And what kind of things can go wrong? I mean, people might think, oh, it's a coffee cake, it's simple enough. They could add the coffee cold, it could just not emulsify with the butter, there's lots of things. Is it okay if I cut in? Absolutely. Oh, oh wow. 
Wow, look at that. So you have your graduation of colours very clearly there. How do you do that? So it's up to them how they do it. I haven't made it very clear in it because it's a technical. Beautiful and moist. Really nice flavour of Baileys off that. It's striking how innocent you look. But this is a rootless challenge. You're going to fit in very well. To begin, the bakers cream together equal measures of butter and sugar. Eggs are then added to lighten the consistency. Next, the flour and coffee. Well, I'm very happy with the fact that it's a sponge. Uh, I make a nice coffee cake myself, not as nice as this one, mind, but I make, oh, I make a nice coffee cake. The flavours in this are right up my street. Coffee, chocolate, baileys, I'm all over it, you know. But that doesn't necessarily mean it will go as well as last week's. 27-year-old Cathy McKenna has recently returned home from Dublin to Milltown, County Monaghan. Oh, it's delicious, Dad. Where she has an appreciative audience for her baking. Once the sponge mix is done, the bakers must make a paste from the cocoa and the coffee. How much coffee did you put in? I just put about half it in, because remember, oh, remember said, um... Well, like, that's not quite a paste, like. Huh? That's not quite a paste. Yeah. And that's a fair amount. Not very strong. Yeah, so far so good. But then I thought I had my time on it sort and sorted for the last two, and... Yeah, I had disasters in the last five minutes, so it tastes good. It's just, I'm killing myself with like, any kind of presentation, so that needs to get sorted out today. Decorating. Fish. I have a very strict clean desk policy, obviously. We'll just shove it in here and then nobody will ever see it. That's vanilla. No, that's vanilla extract. All right. Okay. okay. So then, if I just divide this, then yeah, that's mad. Ailish Carrigan was brought up on a farm in County Leash and now lives in Swords, County Dublin. She's recently left her banking job and hopes to follow a career in baking. For the next step of Lily's coffee cake, the bakers add increasing amounts of the paste to each of the three sponge mixes to colour them from light to dark. I wouldn't grease it if I was you. Uh, oh shit, sorry. Way past that. <laughs> well, you know what? You might be fine. I guess I do have a point to prove this week. Number 12. Better than number 13. <laughs> um, yeah. I have a lot to prove this week, but would you believe it's coffee cake and my last name is Coffee, so I'm hoping that's gonna stand to me. This is looking fabulous. Yeah? Well it's it's okay. It's yeah. Okay, yeah. You've got your three different I'm trying to get colours sure of the, the mixture. Yeah. It sounds like you are good at organizing the process of a bake. Now, if you asked anybody at home, they'd break their heart laughing oh, really? if you said that, Jess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who's at home now? Who do you bake for at home? I bake for my four boys. OK. And for my partner, Michael, and his three children. So we're a bit like the Brady Bunch, my Your four boys. Your four boys think you're the best baker in the world. Well, of course they do. I'm their mammy. If they didn't, I'd slap them. Okay. So no, 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 they do. They like, they love my baking. Sandra from Malahide, County Dublin, is a play school teacher. Yeah. And when she's not busy teaching the bakers of tomorrow, she loves selling her creations at the local market. I've just tried to make them slightly heavier in their brownness, in the colour and the amount of coffee going in, and I'm shoving them in the tins and I'll stick them in the oven soon, hopefully. Mm, not a massive difference. I want to separate them in equal um, parts first, so. Just put them in the tin and be handier. Get them into the oven as quick as I can. Jesus, it's better than any hurling training. Whoops. Oh, I can't manage the butter at all. Is that not too lumpy? Yeah, it doesn't feel lumpy, did you? 
your if butter wasn't soft enough to begin with. Did it go white? No. Should Did I go white? Yeah. Do it again. Do. It's cake week, and Lily has given the bakers a technical challenge. Her own recipe, adults only coffee cake. So I always make coffee cake at home. I think it's a real nostalgic classic that everybody's used to making. The twists I've added to this coffee cake is that there's going to be six different layers graduating in colour from light to dark. They're going to have to drizzle Irish cream liqueur over every second layer and then ice them completely on the outside. Week two, I'm expecting the standard again to lift a level and move it up. They know what I want. They know what I'm expecting to see now. They have to improve. Bakers, if you can hear me over the noise of the blenders, you've got one hour to go, OK? One hour left. Are you hoping I'm going to be like, no? I'll be like that at the end, don't worry. They're cooked. Yeah, they're just like... Too thin. Hey, they could be a lot worse, OK? <laughs> They're very thin. I don't know. Are yours rising, man? Oh, they are, yeah. Loads. Loads? Yeah. Which I'm worried about. Okay. Hers are way thicker than mine, you see. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty... I'm pretty happy with that. This one came... just a little, rose a little bit higher on this side. I would prefer it to be more even. But um, I think when they settle, they'll probably be OK. With the sponges ready, it's time for the bakers to add the buttercream icing, mixing together the butter, sugar and coffee. Just a little bit messy. It'll all be wiped up. It's grand. The mixture is then beaten until it's thick and creamy. Hey. How are you? I'm good. You don't have to look at me. Keep looking I at what won't. you're doing. <laughs> I'm making a mess anyway. How's it going? Under a bit of pressure, to be honest. Um, yeah. I couldn't get the butter to, um, to dissolve properly. It was just so hard. Okay. It must have been just straight from the fridge. It wasn't at room temperature. So, yeah, I had to try and give it a go again. But, whoops. Sorry, I'm just knocking it You're through. OK. Are you starting again? Yeah, well, I've, I've kind of the butter and, and sugar creamed now. So, yeah. Oh, we had to do a rerun. Is this a, a tough technical challenge? Or how, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, under pressure now, um, I suppose. Yeah, I would have liked to be a little bit further at this stage. Yeah. But I'm just going to go like the clovers and think positive. Should we do some relaxation breathing or will I just get out of your hair? Um, no, relaxation breathing is good. OK, well then, let's do it. <laughs> okay. I'll get out of your hair. OK. Bakers, you've got half an hour to finish your adult-only coffee cake. To build the cake, the bakers now need to cut their sponges in half into a total of six equal layers. How do you cut that in half, like? It's crumbly, but, like, the buttercream should hold everything together. I'm hoping, anyway. I generally never cut any cakes I make. I generally just do a smaller batch and then uh, maybe push it, I'd level it off. I never actually cut a cake. Well, hey. Oh, come on, that's not bad, is it? <laughs> it's crooked. Having to start her icing again from scratch means that Ailish is under pressure to catch up. Then, disaster. She has to leave the tent feeling unwell. I think you just need some water. OK, can we get a seat out here? Bakers, you've got ten minutes before you're serving up to Lily and Paul. Ten minutes to go. There's not enough buttercream to do this. Be skimpy. I'm gonna need every last bit of it. Lily wants each second layer drizzled with Irish cream liqueur, and I'm very okay with that. I thought it was a little bit skimpy. I was expecting the bottle. With the clock ticking, paramedics take Ailish away from the tent for treatment. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get this on without anyone seeing it. That is crazy lopsided. Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> well, not when you're doing a challenge with a timer. <laughs> it's not coming back, is it? The final countdown, everybody. One minute to go. You might just do this. Hey, 
bakers, time is up. Stop baking. Tastes nice. The end result was a mess, like really messy. And people were like, oh, it looks good. I'm like, yeah, you're trying to make me feel better about myself. I know you are. So I think, like, if I were to describe the end of the cake in one word, I would say a mess. With those two words, a mess. Again, presentation, I'd say she'd be disgusted with it. Um, you know, so it's not easy on the eye, but it's easy on the stomach, so hopefully she'll take that into account. Obviously, no one's ever seen Lily judge a technical bake of her own, so I just don't know. I mean, she seems really lovely, but she's obviously going to want to, you know, make sure that we did her bake justice, so it's hard to know what she's going to say. She, she didn't have too many great things to say about my technical last week, so I know that she has those claws she could use. <laughs> Hello, bakers. Before we go on, a little bit of news. Elish was unwell and she had to leave the tent, OK? She's fine now. She's up in her room resting, but she didn't complete the bake. So you'll just be judging 10 cakes today. This is obviously a very big crack going down the front of this one. We're missing the kisses on top. Yeah, I think they tried to do, to do some around the end here, right? But uh... Yeah, it's a bit raggedy looking, isn't yeah. it? So there's six layers in them, um, but they're kind of varying, varying depth, and it, they all seem to be kind of a similar colour as well. Yeah, it's, it's touch and go, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a nice light texture to it. Mm, it is. It's decent. You can definitely get the taste of the liqueur in it as well. I think that's nice. It's just a presentation. Let's let it down. Yeah. And it's pretty much everything we were asking for. Mm. There's a nice smooth sides to it, and there's great height to this one as well, um, and lovely little kisses on the top. Yeah, that's a lovely oh, cake. Wow. That's, that's what you're looking for, Yeah, right? that's just what we were looking for with this cake. Um, so just a darker at the bottom, working all the way up to the light. Yeah, it's almost perfect. Yeah, it is. That's a beautiful cake. That's really nice. Yeah. Um, and moving on to this one, then... I mean, everything's fallen off. The kisses have fallen down the side. Mm-hmm. Yes, that looks nice as well. Um, it does look decent, doesn't you it? You know, the colours are good. It actually looks nicer inside than it does out. It doesn't have the same height now as some of the other cakes. It just tastes a bit denser, I don't know why. It is quite dense. Very slapdash kind of a cake. If you walked into a, an artisan shop, that would be probably the last one you'd go to buy. Yeah, it's a pity it's sort of slanted, isn't it? It is, yeah. But there's also one coffee bean missing off here as well, look. Of all these, and one coffee bean missing here. This one here looks nice, doesn't it? Nice and neat. It does, yeah. Yeah. It's, the little kisses would have made a huge difference to this cake, you know. That's really nice, actually. Yeah, it's a nice fluffy texture. Mm. This one, the kisses are really nice on this one as well. Like, really pretty, um, and I wish that they'd been on the top. OK, so the cake itself is just a little bit dry. Um, I'd say maybe there was a bit too much cocoa added to it or something. The zigzag of chocolate, it's not part of it, so it's important to leave it out. It's upside down. Cake is upside down. It should be actually this way. Sloppy. Isn't so it? yeah. So this cake has a really good height to it, um, but again, it's almost like a naked cake around the edges of it. And all the icing is kind of falling down onto the tray. I mean, just looks a little bit sloppy. Mm. I like the nice. There's a nice flavour off that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a good flavour off it. It wasn't the best. I actually like the look of the, the naked cakes, and that's across the board. Like, I thought everyone's kind of looked similar, and I actually would have <laughs> eaten everyone's cakes. You get very few opportunities to actually represent what you can do. So to know that you've kind of wasted one, almost, is really hard. I like a dog with a limp as well, and sometimes those little cakes in the corner are just as nice, so... But no, no, I would have gone for Claire's. <laughs> So, who owns this cake? Yeah, you came 10th. Who owns this cake? Emer, you're in ninth place. Who owns this cake? Yeah, that was 8th, Serena. James comes 7th, Neil is 6th. Natasha 5th, and Fina is 4th. Who owns this one? Me. Sandra, you're in 3rd place. Now, who owns this cake? I do. And who owns this one? Me. Okay, so this cake came in first. 
Yeah, so well done. Obviously awful, another absolute landslide. I think there's a bit of a pattern developing here. It just felt great, you know, last week I felt I really needed to up my game and like I really needed to get a good bake behind me. So, you know, like it, it all worked out and it, it was just the best feeling ever. I was really delighted with Claire's winning bake. She really showed today what this show is all about and it's about amateur bakings achieving professional standards. That cake was absolutely beautiful. Week two of the Great Irish Bake Off, and it's cake on the menu. With the technical challenge behind them, it's time for the bakers to return to the tent for the first showstopper. Pretty nervous about this, especially hearing what everyone else is doing. They're really pushing the boat out. And it's not that I'm not pushing the boat up, but like the kind of things they're incorporating are things I wouldn't even think about. To make up for yesterday's technical challenge, I really have to kind of pull out all the stops, just make sure it looks amazing, because presentation is really what I've fallen down on. It takes an awful lot to knock my confidence for any kind of period of time. Today's a new day, you're starting from scratch again. I intend going out and winning today. Good morning, bakers. Welcome back to the tent. I have, firstly, a little announcement about Ailish. Unfortunately, she is not able to continue, so she won't be in the competition. So it's just you ten bakers this morning, and we wish her the very best. Your coffee cakes yesterday were frighteningly good, which leads me on very nicely to the next challenge. We would like you to bake something out of this world, a Halloween cake. Could be a spooky sponge or a mysterious Madeira. But whatever your showstopper challenge is, these judges need to be scared. Bakers, you have four hours for this challenge. On your marks, Get set, bake. Claire, did you put the spider in my recipe? No, I did I not. Just my recipe. Did somebody inside? No. <laughs> Who did that? I don't know. I've been better, but I know the cake tastes good because I make it all the time. I just hope I can bring the presentation up to something Paul's going to be. I won't even say impressed by, but just something that he thinks is okay and not shabby or awful. <laughs> I will need every second of the four hours, every second. But it's a lovely one to do, so I don't mind in the slightest. It's a lovely bake. So, showstopper today. Can you tell me what takes a cake from just being a cake into a showstopper? Well, for me, a showstopper has to be something quite spectacular. Yeah. The grand finale, the best part. It's got to be, you know, flamboyant. It has to have height, maybe some movement, lots of colour, a story to tell. What we're asking for them to do is make some, like a structure, you know. It can't just be a cake with things stuck onto it, you know. It needs yeah. to make sense as well and work with the theme. And like you were saying, the outside needs to be really good, but once we cut into it, the flavours need to work and it needs to be really visual, I think, as well. It's our first showstopper. Have the bakers been listening to our advice? Mm. Are they listening to our thought when we're talking about structuring, planning their bake, making sure that it doesn't stand up for five seconds and then fall? What would you love to see today? I'd just love to see some of them working outside their comfort zones, but I'd love to see loads of our bakers reaching their full potential. We know that they're able to do really good things, so I hope today that they're going to show us what mm. they can do, you know? Are you worried about anyone? I think for me, Damien's the one who worries me most. I think it might be a little bit of a step too far for him now. I think he's taken off a little bit too much. Being creative takes a lot of skill and a lot of practice. Yeah. Has he put in the practice? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's going to be a challenging day for Damien today. Um, but I know he's got some great ideas, so I hope he'll be able to achieve them the way he can see them in his mind. You know, that's going to be a big uh, struggle for all the bakers, I think, today. Yeah, so what I'm doing today is... Uh, a spooky Halloween house uh, based on a church in Banlakill, County Leach, called the Black Church. Damien's Halloween Black Church is two tiered. The first tier is chocolate orange marble cake, and the second, carrot cake with fondant icing. How are you getting on? Yeah, going good. What are you doing for us today? Um, so I'm doing a haunted house. 
It's in the middle of the woods and you wouldn't, ah, you wouldn't okay. go in there by yourself, like. And is this, is this a direct copy or is this just your, your interpretation of what it's, the black church is? It's fairly close, like, oh, you know, okay. it's, 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 it's black. fairly close, it's black. And it's, it's... It was an edible church. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And can I ask you, you mentioned tempered chocolate. Yeah. Do you, you understand about tempering chocolate or...? Yeah, yeah. Tell so me doing... a little bit of how you're going to temper your chocolate. Yes, I'm bringing it up. I'm currently melting it here now. I'm bringing it up to about 48, maybe 50 right. degrees Celsius. Uh, then I'm going to take it off the heat, bring it back down to about 27, 28. Okay. And then I'm going to bring it back up, add in a bit of chocolate to it, mix it up. Oh, so straightforward. So yeah. straight. <laughs> he passed the test? He has, he's passed the test. But you know, you've added about uh, five extra moves on there. Really? Yeah. Am I allowed to tell him a simple... Well, if, you feel, yeah. if you're yeah. feeling helpful uh, today. I'm feeling For helpful sure. today. I think you deserve this. Thanks. If you melt this chocolate, but yeah. you don't go higher than a temperature of 35 degrees, right. from now, your yeah. chocolate's tempered. Really? You know what I mean? Your time management is crucial yeah, yeah, now, you yeah. know what I mean? This will just cut out five moves and you still got the same product. Yeah, perfect. He is so smart. Yeah, yeah, you owe me one for that. <laughs> Give me some hurling lessons. king. Yeah. <laughs> Pull hard. To that, so. <laughs> Pull hard, yeah. <laughs> I've actually forgot to, to write down my flour amount on my recipe. So I'm guessing. I'm completely winging it. Like, I'm hoping my instinct will help me. Yeah, will you test a bit of that and see if you think it's too buttery or...? Is it a light sponge or is it like a...? Is it no, like a... it's a black velvet, so it's quite... It's thick as well. It's a strong flavour. Yeah. It's lovely, though. No, they wouldn't give false advice. No one here is like that. Not yet, anyway. I have my um, apple stewing. I have my caramel making here as well. It's actually grand. I thought I'd be worse at it, <laughs> considering I'm not a woman. I <laughs> can't multitask, but uh, yeah, it's just as long as nothing's burning, I'm happy. I really thought I would be able to hide my lack of mathematical ability here in the Bake Off tent, she says, holding a can of yeah. Darina's Halloween delight will be her spider baby cake chocolate Guinness Bailey's buttercream, a shortbread spider, and marshmallow cobwebs. For my presentation, I'm going to be doing some marshmallow cobwebs up the, the height of the cake, and then we're going to simulate some spider nests with sponge sugar, spider egg sacks uh, out of uh, white chocolate ganache, and then <laughs> the piece de resistance, which could fall apart, um, is going to be a 3D spider made out of shortbread and dipped in tempered chocolate. So Brilliant. I've made him. He's pretty spooky, so if he holds up, He'll be great. And he, oh, he's got, she even, has babies going all down the side of the kit. Wow. So it's fairly wow. intricate for someone of my presentation skills. But I'm hoping, Paul, you just don't tell me it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be honest, it is. Yeah. I know, uh, I know. I have to be honest. Oh. Close it up quick. Well, they've only been in for 10 minutes, but I'm just worried they're not going to rise because I didn't know what flour to use because, of course, I forgot to write it down. So I use plain flour, so I'm worrying there's not enough raising agent in it. Yeah. They rose even. <laughs> sour and apple bonfire cake with druid's buttercream and pomegranate drizzle features apple peel twigs and hazelnut embers. Hot! Oh! Hot, 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 hot. They're supposed to be black, thank God. Perfect. Two consistencies are good. We're all good. Damien, my cake's green. I coloured it black. Yeah, it looks like green already, doesn't it? I'm like, hey ho, Halloween, it's a coloured cake. Cover it up, please. <laughs> as long as it doesn't poison anyone. That's exactly what I was looking for. I'm so happy with that. That's about as perfect as a Yukon I've ever made, so. Can't be unhappy with that. Neil is 36 years old, lives in Glasnevin, and works as an account executive. His passions in life are baking, football, and winning. But occasionally, he lets his son win. His Phantom of the Opera coffin cake with chacon sponge, chocolate ganache and raspberry ravioles sounds scarily good. How are you doing? Hi, Paul. Hey. Lily. Hey, Anna. Good, yeah. yeah, good, good. Tell us what you're baking for us today. So, uh, I'm making an opera cake 
that will be shaped um, like a coffin. Okay. Because um, I'm a little bit dark when it comes to Halloween. I like scary rather than sexy. Yeah. Um, and what I'm doing is with one of the layers, I'm going to have uh, raspberry ravioles. Right. So when you cut into them, that they kind of pop and explode and, and give the what illusion. What's called? Rav raspberry ravioles. It's really nice to see Neil just bringing a little bit of modern uh, techniques in here as well. Yeah. Um, I suppose you call it nearly molecular, wouldn't you? Yeah. Is it big enough? Do you think it's going to be big enough as a showstopper? Yeah. Yeah, well, of course it will. And you know what size is in everything, Paul? Size doesn't matter. No. Right. It's, what, it's quality, quality, not quantity. <laughs> so, um, Keep telling yourself that. That's what I've been telling myself for years to get me through. <laughs>
I don't think they'd be massively impressed. I think it's lovely, but as I said, it's more a ah than a wow. Kathy, do you need a hand with your cake? If you were to mind, I'll be your little witchy helper. It's a nice cake. Is it a showstopper? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Wow, that's delicious. Like? Yeah. It tastes absolutely amazing. It's, it's really nice and moist with the apple on the inside. It definitely is a showstopper taste-wise. Happy? It's not as clean as I'd like it. I do agree with you. It is a little bit rough. Oh, well. Very vivid colours. <laughs> wow. That's lime, is it? Buttercream? That's beautiful. It's delicious. Thank you. I was concerned whether it was going to be a little flat and yeah. kind of on its own and not very impressive. And I don't think I've been disappointed. Even just a bit of white piping on it, like across or something, would have had a huge effect on the outside of it. Flavour's nice, actually. Very nice. Again, it's just about presentation, especially with a showstopper. I like it. Yeah. How did you do the, the hair? Just with this bit? The hair is with like a small grass nozzle. Okay. Yeah, so then just so it's individual. The individual. It probably took the bones of an hour to do the, the icing. It tastes really good. It's a lovely moist sponge in it. Mm -hmm. um, and the lovely spices, it's really nice and Halloween y. So it's exactly what you promised. Thanks, Millie and Claire. Anything that could go wrong did go wrong. This is not what I explained to you, what I promised you. It's probably killing you <laughs> <laughs> to look at something so incredibly shabby. I know. Let's be honest, it's a mess. Yes. I don't think you're a bad baker. I just think this is maybe just a bad bake. Yes. It's, it's very average. It's not, yeah. it's not by any means a showstopper. Yeah. It's nowhere close. Such a pity. The flavour's absolutely, I think it's delicious. It does look very much just like a cake with a few bits. You know, the raspberry is really, really delicious with the icing and everything. So the, the combination is really good, but the cake itself is just a little bit dry. It's got the colours of a showstopper. Yeah. But it, there's nothing else about it, really. Yeah. Probably not a, a great idea to have such a hard sweet inside a cake. OK. Because what's happening now is I'm cutting, and as I and cut down, I'm dragging, okay. you see, and it's getting really messy. I mean, I'm not too sure about the gesture the hand is making there now, but is that supposed to face me like that or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's dull. Yeah. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it needs something else. The cake is a bit dense on the inside, right? And just a little bit dry. I would have loved, um, even if sort of a fluffier icing on the inside as well, just to sort of lighten it. Is this the way it's meant to look? Well, it's based on the black church in Vanlick Hill, which is basically an old church that's fallen apart. So... <laughs> 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 I think it's a pretty, it's, uh, it's a pretty good replica. I think it's hard not to like that. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> All you need now is a crooked bike outside or something. <laughs> so how did you stack these up? Um, I stacked them up, one cake on top of the other. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> is that a dog or what is that outside? No, that's the. The white lady, she, she haunts the, the black church, so... That's her. Is that her face? That's her face, yeah, yeah. She looks, like a, looks like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do you know what, I kind of, I do like it. I like it, it's just, because uh, it's got that kind of uh, unusual melting kind of a look about it. Cartoony look about That's it. That's it, yeah. Carrot cake, too dry. Really, yeah. But the colour is fantastic with yeah. the grey on the outside. It, looks, it was really nice cutting into it. I mean, well done on the presentation. Yeah, the good effort, yeah. Well done. I suppose when Paul said that, you know, that I really delivered on what I said I was going to do, and um, that really made it for me, that, like, that was the plan, so th that really made it. They're just knocking it out of the park, and I don't really want all of these shabby things I'm making to be judged against them, but at the same time, it's great fun in there, you know, it's, you're getting to just bake all day, everyone loves that, but, uh, you know, it's not coming across in my bakes, <laughs> how much I love it. No, I'm not ready to go home, no, not at all. I don't want to go out on a down. I want to go out knowing I've tried my best. It's week two, but our first showstopper. Um, Paul, did you like what you saw? I've kind of mixed emotions about what I saw. I got, we got a mixed bag. Um, some were quite impressive, some dodged a broom, and then some were very, <laughs> very good. Um, Lily, who did you like? Who impressed you? 
And Claire again was absolutely amazing today. She took exactly what we asked for and she gave us this incredible monster cake. It was really simple but really perfectly done, so I was delighted with Claire's cake today. I thought Cathy's was really good as well. She was going more traditional route using all natural ingredients and not relying on fondant, so I thought that was really refreshing to see. This was funny. <laughs> I don't know for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. I mean, I love this cake. I think this is just perfect for Damien. I mean, there's, not, there's no uh, precision in this. It's a little bit chaotic. I mean, does it make sense? No, not really, but it looks great. I think a few of the bakers were a little bit too ambitious. Natasha, maybe today, had a lovely idea of when we cut down through the cake that all the sweets would fall, magically fall out. Mm just wasn't the sweets were too hard so when you did cut down it got caught in the knife and then you'd pull the sponge apart and it just becomes a mess yeah Darina sounded fantastic when we were going around she has amazing ideas and a really good imagination but it just didn't it didn't come through and I almost felt like she had given up before she had even started today to be honest Hello bakers, welcome back to the tent. As usual, I've got the good news and the bad news. First of all, the good news, star baker. Now, the judges chose somebody who probably left the rest of you feeling a bit green with envy. <laughs> so, star baker this week is Claire. <laughs> and now the terrible news. Paul and Lily felt very strongly about the fact that a few of you, maybe quite a lot of you, um, didn't deliver on what you promised. Leaving the great Irish bake-off is Nobody. You all get to stay. However, they felt that two of you were very, very close to being eliminated. But they felt generous and they wanted to give you one more chance. So give yourselves a round of applause. Well done. And I can't believe that we're all still here. I mean, it's great that we are, because it's such a lovely group of people, but yeah, it's a bit shocking, all right. It was the skin of my teeth that I was getting through, and I've been given another chance, and I guess I just have to try and, and justify the chance. Well done, Claire. Yeah. Yeah. That was just perfect for Damien. I mean, I'm going to start looking up the white lady for inspiration and luck. It would be the bake that I needed to drive on and to get through the next few weeks. I thought Claire is absolutely brilliant today as well and I just know she's going home and she's going to be bread making till she gets back here next week. I'm absolutely thrilled. I just can't believe it that I'm star baker this week. It's the best feeling. Next time on The Great Irish Bake Off, we're going to kick off bread week with a signature challenge. I haven't found the healthiest. It could taste desperate. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. So you've made a big effort in your presentation. Kind of cool, no? Yeah. Right? I love that you've done something with the inside of the bread as well. Look, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to walk myself. Let's face it, it's burnt. 